Welcome everyone to the sold out Key Arena in downtown Seattle, Washington in game two of our TNT NBA doubleheader, the return of former Sonic Ray Allen as the Boston Celtics take on the Seattle Supersonics. With Doug Collins and David Aldridge, Kevin Harlan, there is no score. Sonics have started 0 of 1. The Celtics have started 0 of 2. Here is Ray Allen. And off to Garnett with a perfect screen. And the first points on the board, Doug. Well, Kevin, this is going to be fun tonight. This is our first really up close and personal look at the Boston Celtics. Uh, we know about their three big stars, but more importantly, their defense this year really has been their calling card. So let's watch tonight to see if they can do the same thing here tonight with the Seattle Supersonics on their home court. Boston number one in all the significant defensive categories. There's a switch right there, and Garnett comes up with the loose ball, and he's been the reason why their defense has been better. Uh, Kevin Garnett, uh, his defense along that front line, and Rondell at the point guard. So those, both of these guys are critical to the pressure on the point of the ball, and then Kevin Garnett defending in that lane area, especially against a lot of screen rolls. Here's Watson with the runner. That will tie the game at two. The Sonics come in with the worst start in the 41-year history of their franchise, 8-20, and, and with the best record in the NBA, the Boston Celtics at 23-3. and three. Boston, a very unselfish offensive team. They move the basketball. They get very high percentage shots. It's Perkins inside as he shed the defense of Kurt Thomas. Well, that's what they want him to do, Kevin. Clear up a lot of those loose balls, offensive rebounding. They're not going to run any plays for him. Damian Wilkins in a shooting slump, and they need his offense with the rebound collected by Perkins. And here comes Rondo out of Kentucky, who they think is a very valuable piece as Garnett throws back to Rondo inside. Gets his own miss, kicks it out to the open Garnett and finds Pierce who thought about three and Durant came in. And Kevin Garnett, a late arriving Kurt Thomas. Well, Kevin Garnett actually had a better shot the first time. Austin is being so unselfish, sometimes they're passing up shots. Kevin reminds me sometimes of an all-star game where guys go in and they're so afraid to shoot the ball or take too many shots, they make the extra pass. And Boston really continuing to adjust to one another, but they've been so unselfish this year. The chemistry has obviously been terrific if you take a look at the players on the floor. Record that they've accomplished. Durant with three over Pierce. Rebound by Kevin Garnett, the 11th best rebounder in the NBA. Now Seattle wants to look for early offense. Rondo will push it. Here's Garnett once again for a jump shot that he is so lethal with. But Boston is a team that runs selectively, Kevin. They run off turnovers and steals. They're number one in the uh, NBA points off turnovers. Now Seattle, on the flip side of that, they want to push and get early offense. They're not a good half-court team, so let's see which style can win out here tonight. So Garnett has already started the game three of four with six points, and over Perkins is shot by Wilcox. That's another guy that Seattle needs to throw in some points tonight. Well, they need Wilcox, and they, they need Wilkins. Uh, you know, Kurt Thomas gives them a nice play on the front line. And to, to take some of the pressure off the line, here's Paul Pierce with that fate, fading step-back jump shot. And the aggressive Perkins inside with the foul called. Reaching in with Wilkins, and he draws his first personal foul. You see our score, 8-4, to four with... The Boston Celtics on top of Seattle. Now our Doug Collins keys to the game brought to you by Heineken. Well, you know, quick start. Seattle, when they win the first quarter, 4-1. Kevin, when they don't, they're 4-19. So they need to get off to a good start. They cannot dig themselves a whole turnover. We talked about Boston leads the NBA in points off turnovers. Seattle is number one in turning the ball over at 17. That'll be a story. Veteran production. We know about the best in uh, Boston three stars. But Seattle, who's going to help Durant? Kevin, we talked about that a little bit. Will it be Wilcox, Damian Wilkins? Wally Serbiak, some veteran guys, and then finishing the game. The closers belong to the Boston Celtics. If the game is close, they will have an advantage as Barnett here with the offensive rebound. Seattle has not won a game this year, trailing going into the fourth quarter. They're 0-18. They need a cushion going into that fourth period. First show on since opening night here tonight. Opening night was against Phoenix, and Doug and I were here for that. The foul has just gone on Rondo, and he picks up his first. Here comes Earl Watson out of UCLA, and Wilkins who played at Georgia. And the first time the Celtics have seen Kevin Durant, right now the leading rookie scorer in the NBA. Shot clock at six, Watson across the lane. Thomas saves it, fresh 24. Wilcox to Watson, oh, I thought it hit the rim. I thought it did too, I thought it hit the edge of the rim there. Let's, let's see if there's a, if PJ can test that, but I thought it did get a piece of the rim, Kevin. I'm right there with you. Take a look here. I sure, off absolutely. The backboard, it did get a piece of the yep. rim.
And it should have been a fresh shot clock with which to work, but they're not going to get it. And here comes Boston. Celtics won last night by 30 in Sacramento. That was the first of four or five nights for this Boston team. First extensive road trip of the season out west. Look at Garnett flying inside and a foul. Well, Kevin Garnett, a deadly mid-range jump shooter. And what happens, Kevin, when you make a few like he has done to start this game, then you see Kurt Thomas biting on that pump fake. And Kevin Garnett, if he has a weakness in his game, and this is sort of, uh, you know, picking at things a little bit, Kevin, but he does not get to the free throw line that often. You look on the season, he's only attempted 117 free throws in 26 games, so he shoots a little over four a game. And that's one of the things I always talked about in Minnesota, that he didn't get to the line enough. Now, with this Boston team and the fact that Paul Pierce shoots a lot, Ray Allen has the ability to get there, maybe that will not be a factor. Uh, but Garnett, not a guy who gets to the line a lot during the course of the season. But, Doug, as the numbers will tell you, this has been, I mean, a, a completely unselfish team because everybody's shots and everybody's scoring has changed around and the runner off the baseline rebound by Perkins. I mean, everybody is sacrificing to, to some degree. And, and, they're, and they've built themselves with their defense first. That's really the amazing thing is how quickly it's come together defensively. There's Ray Allen with a long-range jump shot. Perkins can't find it. Here comes Watson. This is what Seattle wants to do. They want to run up the Rams. Finishing at the other end right into Ray Allen. Uh, you said it. That's exactly when Seattle's at their best. They want to get this crowd behind them. A very electric crowd here tonight with Ray Allen coming back here for, for his first game. Honored before the game. It's Perkins inside over Wilcox who gave a little shove. And he'll go to the line as Wilcox picks up the foul. That's the second on Chris Wilcox out of Maryland. As you see Durant. He can do a lot of things. If the outside shot doesn't go, he'll slash inside. The Sonics will need that tonight against the best team in the NBA, the Boston Celtics. The NBA, Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. By Lincoln, reach higher. By Red Lobster, try all your big favorites during the Big Seafood Festival right now at Red Lobster. And by autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. Welcome back to Key Arena. It's time for the Lincoln Sideline Report. Tonight is the first time Ray Allen's been back here at Key Arena since he was traded to Boston in the offseason. It was a deal that shocked Allen at first, but he's gotten used to the idea for playing for the league's best team. Even though the Sonics didn't win very much when Allen was here, for four and a half years, this place was home. It's an exciting moment for me. I think about going back to Milwaukee after I got traded. Uh, just. You see so many faces that you, you not necessarily forgot, but just in that same position or place in the building, that same seat, people, the ushers in the building, you forget how much you know, a place meant to you when you see people that you hadn't seen on a regular basis, that you've been seeing on a regular basis over so many years. So I definitely look forward to that. Doug, he was certainly the face of the Sonics all four years. He was an all-star, let him in scoring each of those seasons. And class personified, Kevin. I think that the... Uh, Seattle fans, uh, you know, part of his talent was one of the reasons why uh, they didn't want to see him go, but also the way he represented this city and this organization, both he and Richard Lewis and what they did here. So nice moment for Ray before the game. I'm sure he would love to play well here tonight. Nick Collison has now come in for Seattle. That is the first substitution we have seen. Great matchup here. You got Paul Pierce playing uh, Kevin Durant, and uh, all Doc Rivers did was great about Paul Pierce's defense this year. Said how much improved he was in that area. Rondo hits Pierce in stride. Now here's Garnett, our leading scorer with seven points. He has started three of five from the field. Paul Pierce has gone 0 of 3. Durant is defended. And over the shot. And inside is claimed by Thomas. And here comes Kevin Durant, the number two overall pick out of the University of Texas. Now, D Durant is not strong enough to play against Paul Pierce, so he's got to give him a little bit of a cushion, Kevin, and then he can bother him with his length as he did on that possession in the post. Good point. Here's Durant outside. That nice stroke. He's got it. And the Sonics from the floor, 4 of 11, Doug. The Celtics are 4 of 14 starting from the field. It's Thomas watching Garnett. Kevin has really got the stroke now, four of six. Well, he gets such great extension on his shot. And Kevin, I know you were in Minnesota when he first started. His shot used to be very flat. It was. And Kevin McHale worked a long time with him, teaching him to lift that shot. And he's become a deadly mid-range shooter. 
Wilkins got doubled, and then with a series of moves, gets free and inside, and that's another thing the Sonics have got to do, get those close inside shots. Yeah, they got to get easy scores. they got to get some fast breaks, some second chance, get to the foul line. They've got to manufacture points against this Celtic defense. What a pass by Garnett inside to Allen. Well, that give and go, and uh, they, they want to play inside out, Kevin, either through the post or dribble penetrate and kick out for threes. Here's Durant once again. He's starting to feel it. I think he was a little excited to start this game. Playing against Kevin Garnett, who he idolized throughout his uh, youth uh, when he was a young man. Loved to watch Garnett, and uh, being on the court with him the first time that I'm sure is something special. Out of the way, the Celtics first felt when, felt when Garnett walked through the locker room. Once the trade was finished with Minnesota back this summer, here's Rondo right into Durant, who then grabs the loose ball. And rebounding in the game, basically the same. The Celtics are plus one in that category. Thomas with the screen. They switch on defense. And Perkins now picks up Durant. He hit it two in a row until that missed the rebound by Rondo. All Pierce out of Kansas. Multiple All-Star games, but not until this year, as he said, he's felt complete, like he's really got a chance. Into Durant. With an easy two, and he hits his first, he's one of five. Well, Paul Pierce is so strong, and Durant has to be very careful. He got a real cheap foul the first possession of the game. He can ill afford to get himself in foul trouble. And Thomas, what a pass inside. Kurt Thomas to the slashing point guard, Earl Watson. Well, he's made such a huge difference in this team, Kevin. They started out two and nine this year. They lost their first eight games, and he missed the first 10 with a hamstring injury. Since he's come back, they've been a 500 team, so he solidified their defense, really knows how to play, helped their rebounding. They, they really need Kirk Thomas. Both teams have six points apiece in the paint. Look at the ball movement. It's Pierce outside for three. He's now hit two in a row. That's the game's first three-point shot. Well, that's one of the keys for P.J. Carlissimo in Seattle to defend that three-point line tonight. They go inside. Yeah, in fact, before it was even out of your mouth, that's what he said. we got to watch him on the perimeter. Everything, though, is inside-outside. Here's a little drive by Paul Pierce. He gets a left-handed shot to go. The next time down the floor, you're going to see a nice give-and-go. Kurt Thomas really knows how to play. Watson with the easy score. Boston by six. With Doug Collins and David Aldridge, Kevin Harlan. Celtics on top. Garnett has played well. This was some of the bones of that trade and, and putting this team together. Allen first, and a month later, Kevin Garnett in the trade. Well, when Seattle, excuse me, when Boston get the first or second pick, uh, when the ping pong balls came up right. and they got the fifth, it sort of started the wheels in motion. Paul Pierce wanted a veteran player, did not want another younger player. So when it went to the fifth pick, they ended up making this deal to get Ray Allen. Jeff Green was the fifth pick. He goes, and then for Kevin Garnett, that deal was revisited later. Kevin, a lot of people thought that was going to be made before the draft, but it could not be worked out. And then the expiring contract of Theo Ratliff and Al Jefferson brought really Kevin Garnett as the turnover. So the patience really in how it all worked out with Kevin Garnett not going there early, they ended up getting Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett. And Doc Rivers, once again, looks like the coach of the year that he once was. With Orlando, you're right. <laughs> yeah, he's loving his team. Garnett is not out on the sideline, and Pollard is in the game. And Rondo out to Pierce. Calls it to a three. And works it in to Perkins, who has a close-range shot, giving uh, Boston D.A. the biggest lead. What do you have? The draft, Paul Pierce had a draft night party, and when they didn't get the first or second pick, he left, and a lot of people thought he was upset. He was actually thrilled because he knew they would have to trade that pick. He said he's just been tired the last three years of teaching young guys how to practice, what to wear, what to eat, where to go. He just couldn't stand it anymore, and he wanted to be around some veteran guys that knew how to do all that stuff, and he got his wish. He did. Here's one of them right here, sneaking down the lane. It's Ray Allen. Coming up for two, and now Allen tonight has gone two of five. He's got four. Garnett has a game-high nine, and here is Kevin Durant, and he has put in six. Collison had a jam here moments ago, and Jeff Green is in the game, the Big East Player of the Year out of Georgetown. And he stepped out of bounds, did Wally Serbiak, the ex-Celtic, who was involved in that Ray Allen trade. That's five Seattle turnovers to begin the game. Well, we talked about turnovers being one of the keys, Kevin. They turn it over 17 times. Now, the difference is that's what I call a dead ball turnover. You take the ball out of bounds, you right. get your defense back. 
The teams average nine steals a game against Seattle. You can't guard against steals. That's where they give up all those points off turnovers. Finger roll by Pierce. And Perkins can't save it. Sonics will get it back in 42 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Okay, but well that's what I talked about. 17, uh, 17 turnovers, most in the NBA. And the Boston defense, they force over 17 turn turnovers, which is third. They get about nine steals a night, which is second, and they have number one in points off turnovers. So 20% of their offense is created off turnovers. Delonte West, the SX Celtic, has just checked in for Watson. There's a rejection by Perkins on the shot by Durant. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Delonte West with the Celtics, by the way, having a foul to give. Tony Allen has also checked in now for Boston. Delonte West has had foot problems, plantar fasciitis, and so he has missed a lot of games of late. They'd like to see him with more time on the floor. Number one, so they can figure out what he's going to play, point guard or the two guard. Well, same thing. Luke Ridenauer has been hurt right. about the time he plays and plays well. He's out once again tonight with a quad injury, so the point guard situation very much up in the air, as is their center position. They have three big men. The one's in the D League now. Robert Swift is now hurt. Petro on the bench. So they, they got to figure out what do they have at point guard and what do they have at center. That's going to be a key to this season and where they go and the commitment they make to these people. Difference of two seconds. The game clock and shot clock winding down the first quarter. West got by Rondo. And knocks it a three. Delonte West from outside for the Seattle Supersonics. A couple seconds remaining. And here comes Rondo. Gets it off to Al. Will not count even if it went. Defending was Collison. And a three brings the Sonics to within five to close out the first quarter. I'm not sure this is how P.J. drew it up, <laughs> but he will take it. Delonte West, we know he can score. Uh, they need him on the floor, especially coming off the bench. He and Wally Zerbiak, Jeff Green, part of that bench that Seattle desperately needs to perform. Doc, you've had the league's best defense all season. How would you say you guys did in the first quarter then? We did all right. You know, we gave up some transition baskets. That's how they want to play. We just got to make them play half court, David. If we can do that, we're going to be okay. Yeah, guys, this is Ray Allen's first game back. Obviously, you've been a veteran of homecomings. How do you keep a guy from doing too much? Well, Dave, uh, he's different. You know, Ray is pretty calm by nature. So I think he's done a nice, nice job of trying to let the game come to him. He's not rushing. That's what we, we want him to do. Doc, always good to see you here in Seattle. Ray Allen has started two of five. Doug, you thought the quick start was important for the Sonics. They're down by five and turnover points. Boston is plus three. Well, you, you see the numbers, and I think the two keys here for Boston is uh, Seattle shot only 43%, and they had five turnovers. So if you're Doc Rivers, as he just talked to David Aldridge, happy with the defense, get him to play in the half court, and now let's see what the Boston bench will do. I think that's one of the big... Uh, things that people talked about in the offseason, you know, could Eddie House and, and James Posey and Scott Pollard, uh, these guys come in and do what's necessary uh, to be able to then supplement uh, the three stars for Boston. So let's see how the bench does here tonight. They've been a factor here in the early part of this season. Tony Allen just picked up his first personal foul. Here is Collison inside. Serbiak, Collison, West. Mikael Jellibol, along with Jeff Green, the Sonic Five. And Pierce is out there with Posey and House, as Doug was talking about, Tony Allen, and, of course, Scott Power. There's Wally Serbiak, the ex-Celtic. He had major ankle surgery a year ago, missed 50 games, and is trying to reclaim his career this season. Here's House, one of the top three-point shooters in the NBA just beneath the arc right there, but that shot can loosen things up a lot for Boston's yeah, offense. He, he brings a lot of energy, one of the most popular players on the team, and he has got a quick trigger, Kevin. This guy scored 61 points in a college game at Arizona State. Here's Green across the lane inside into Posey. He's really become a pretty good low post player. When you see him in the post, that's his pad to move, the little jump hook. Actually gets caught playing a lot of power forward right now, but uh, eventually I think you're going to see him be their small forward. Only one starter on the floor. Here comes Allen inside with a foul. That is Pierce, the one starter for either team on the floor right now with Boston on top by five. They've led by as many as eight. The Sonics have never led in this game. We are a minute into this second quarter. Well, as you watch this Seattle team this year and their growth, this guy right here, Jeff Green, his progress and him becoming a much better player along with Kevin Durant, his progress, and him becoming. These two guys are going to be critical to where this franchise goes. So don't necessarily focus on the wins and losses. 
but but the objectives of this season are far uh, greater than that. We talked about the point guard situation, the development of those two players, the big men and their progress, and effort every night. I would say right now three of the five are moving in the right direction. Point guard situation with injuries still up in the air, as is the big man situation. That's we'll have to keep yeah. our eye on that. It's a good look at the landscape. Oh, oh. They go inside, and Green caught the pass from West. But could not get it to go. Here comes Tony Allen coming back from major left knee surgery. Blew an ACL, and he is still done trying to uh, get his rhythm back in the field for the game. Yeah, Doc Rivers told us before the game, you see flashes. It's, uh, this is what Paul Pierce does. He brings the slashing, cutting. They give him a little isolated side. And what they're hoping is that you help, and now he kicks out the Posey or Eddie House. Here's Jalabal trying to play him one-on-one. -on -one. Collison coming over to give help. He draws the foul. Uh, but that's one of the things Paul Pierce does. He gets to the free throw line. He's a guy who shoots upwards of eight or nine free throws a night. And uh, you can see part of the sacrifice. He's uh, averaging about four and a half less points a game. But look, his field goal percentage is up. His field goal attempts are down. His assists are up. More importantly, his defense is much better. Did a great job last night on Ron Artest in Sacramento. And he drew the, the uh, matchup tonight uh, with Kevin Durant. Jellaball picked up the foul. Well, that... One of the things you talked about his defense being there, that's the most, I think, intriguing part of his season. Well, I think he always used to say, you know what, I really have to rest on the defensive end because I have to score so many points. Now, now I, he can't use that because he's got help out there. And so now, when he sees Kevin Garnett playing, he has to bring that same energy on the defensive end he did looking to score. Collison with the screen. Delonte West and the shot clock is down to four. They go inside the Serbian out of Miami of Ohio. And he puts it in. He was a one-time Garnett teammate with the Minnesota Timberwolves and a one-time All-Star. I think P.J. really likes him coming off the bench because he can come in and score. Bruce Pierce, he's a five-time All-Star, working on the defensive mind in green. Rebound by West. Wide open is Ronald Serviak for two. Well, he can do that. Now, if you give him open shots, he will knock them down. And again, what Doc Rivers talked about before is transition defense. That's when Seattle is at its best, when they run and get early, uncontested shots. They've crept to within five of the Boston Celtics. All but one starter are gone. That's Pierce, the lone starter, working on three. And a foul goes inside on the rookie from Georgetown, Jeff Green. Well, Wally Zerbiak knows how to move without the basketball. Remember uh, throughout his career playing with Kevin Garnett, who was that high post passer, learning how to get open off screens and then spotting up uh, with the long jump shot. So, you know, PJ, uh, PJ Colissimo has been wrestling with, you know, who do I start? He's been getting off the slow starts. He's been starting Damian Wilkins because Damian is their best perimeter defender out there. And with Durant, he doesn't want Durant to have to play the other team's best perimeter guy. So he has Damian Wilkins. But Wilkins has been struggling on the offensive end. He likes Wally coming in because he gives him that offense coming in off the bench. So you give up a little starting offensively, but you get better defense. They switch the foul. They put it on Collison, who picks up his second. Johan Petro out of France will check in. He was the number 25 pick three years ago. As Pierce puts it in, Washington is plus nine points from the free throw line tonight. And approaching nine to play in this first half. They got House on West. And Allen trying to run through the end. Here comes Tony Allen. There's the drive and some of that explosive power we we're used to seeing from him and rest the other way. Well, you could just see he didn't quite have right. the lift on that shot. Normally, he's a guy that would try to dunk that ball. And, and, uh, uh, Doc Rivers told us before the game, you see flashes where he made a spectacular play, but then the next time doesn't trust it. That time, you could see he just didn't quite trust it as he tried to get to the basket for that layup. 8.57 to play before halftime here in Seattle. Hey, defense on three. Defense, defense, One, two, three. Defense. 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 Oh. Great job, baby. Hey, I got to get that offensive. And, Doug, when you take a look at some of the numbers of the Boston Celtics, the thing that you said earlier in the game, the presence and the energy and 
the way that Garnett anchors the lane, but the on-ball defense to begin the defense by Rondo, two main components why this team is playing so well. Well, first in all three th three areas here, the last team to do that, the 92-93 New York Knicks, that was a Pat, Pat Riley coach team. Their philosophy was foul you 60 times, they'll only call 30, you know, so <laughs> they just beat you up. And uh, and Doc Rivers was on that team, so he knows a lot right. about it, but that was Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley. Anthony Mason, Derek Harper. I mean, that was a very strong team. When when the referees didn't call much on the perimeter, there was a lot of contact, but uh, that team really went after you. This is a different kind of Boston defense, though. This is more speed and quickness, shot blocking, a little bit more finesse. It's a different kind of defense, but just as effective. Good point. These are Seattle's first free throws tonight, as you see the two leading scorers of the game, both with nine points, Pierce and Garnett on the Boston bench right now. There's Posey, the ex-Miami Heat player. Pat Riley told us a couple weeks ago he really wanted to keep it, but couldn't afford it. House. The closeout by West may have altered the shot. Petra with the rebound. Both teams shooting about the same right now, about 43% for the game for each. And Green. This match on reality just checked in the game. Pollard is there to reel it in. Has made his trip around the NBA to many teams. Like a lot of these guys, Doug, are true. House has played for a lot. Pollard and Posey have played for a lot of teams. A three by Allen, the rebound by Serbia. And West the other way. A lot of great defensive jerseys right around him. And a foul called on the Boston Celtics with 8.02 to play here in the second quarter. And it goes on Eddie House, who picks up his first. Of the game. Here comes Kevin Garnett back in the game, taking the place of Pollard. So Garnett comes back in after a good four and six start from the floor with three rebounds to begin things. And at the line will be Delonte West. Tomorrow on NBA TV, New Orleans will take on Charlotte coverage at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And January 4th on ESPN, Detroit, Toronto, and Miami will take on Dallas 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN. So here is Delonte West, who, if they could keep healthy, they would uh, probably have a better feel for where he's going to fit in on this team. But you wonder, Doug, how many of these are, are frontline players, are real starters on a decent to good team? Well, I, I think when you look at their team, they're hoping that uh, eventually Jeff Green and Kevin Durant can be starters on a playoff team. And then they got to go from there. What are they going to do with their point guard situation, their big man situation, their power forward? I like the three power forwards, O'Collison and Kurt Thomas. And Chris Wilcox. I think they all bring something different to the table. Seattle's on an 8 to 2 run right now. And with a three point game as close as it's been in a while. Here's Posey, a good three point shooter. Missing right there. The defense on the play by Green. West again triggers the offense. A three from Serbiak. Wally Serbiak puts it down from outside for coach. P.J. Carlissimo. Well, Don, uh, Delonte West and Wally Serbiak have really played well off this bench. Boston has not hit from the field in over four minutes. Garnett to Allen. And Allen to Posey. The closeout by Green and a three put down by Posey. A dribble penetration kick out. You get the defense to collapse. You can either do it by throwing it in the post or taking it off the dribble. And that's when Boston excels. They can play a lot of different ways, can't the Celtics, as Petro inside lines up. Now, the best thing they do, though, Kevin, is when they come down, if they can't get into the running game off turnovers and either go into the post to Garnett or Paul Pierce or get some dribble drive action, that's really when they're their best offensively. Petro watching Garnett. Rebounded by Jeff Green. Fifth overall pick. He was actually selected by Boston that came in that trade that Sonic said this is who we want, and that's who they took. Comes it again. Slammed away by Garnett. Foul called on the big ticket inside with 6.32 to play here in the first half. And the foul goes. Now they're going to put it on Allen. Tony Allen must have come in from the wing and picks up the foul. And he's a little bit surprised at the call. He said, wait a minute. Put it on somebody else. Green will be at the line. That's one of those where if you're Doc Rivers, you say, Tony, raise your hand. <laughs> take the foul. You're not going to foul out. We do not want that to go against Kevin Garnett. Doug, Seattle began this season 0-8, eventually fell to 2-14, but they've gone 6-6 six and six since. What do you see as the reason why they've kind of plateaued here and, and maybe bottomed out and are now are improving? Well, I think they really missed Kurt Thomas to start. I think they were adjusting 
uh, to P.J. Carlissimo, his uh, style of play. They had, obviously, Kevin Durant, a young player that they're putting so much on in terms of trying to score to be the first option. So there was a lot of growth going on here. And then Kurt Thomas came back. Their defense has gotten better. Uh, they're developing a style of play that they like to play. They're getting more comfortable. Guys are settling in on their roles, and they're winning some basketball games. Again, they got Petro, the seven-footer, on the seven-footer Garnett. Wow. That little yes. Hakeem Olajuwon shake move there that he fades away. You can't block that shot. He's got to hope to get a hand up and make it as difficult as possible. And you can see Kevin Garnett, one of the most intense just competitive say, players in the NBA. Can you compare him to anybody? Is yeah. Petro. Uh, Michael Jordan. Gets one out from outside. In terms of his energy and competitiveness, he's so much like Michael. Just uh, That's high praise. Oh, you bet it's high praise. It's the highest of praise. Rondo has just checked in. Out there with Allen and Posey. Garnett and Ray Allen. So a couple of Allens on the floor for the Boston Celtics. The shot clock is down to seven. Under six to play in this first half. Rondo met by Serbian. Posey over the outstretched arm of Green. It's caught by Jellaball who just checks in. Durant continues to sit on the Seattle bench. Look at the great move by West inside. Well, that's what they love about him when he's healthy. Kevin, he can create off the dribble, he can get his own shot, and he can get hot and put up a big night. Doug has come off the bench with nine points and six offered here in the second quarter. Yeah, he and Wally Zerbiak have been terrific. Another time. Out of bounds. Shot clock at five and 5.04 to play. As we see West with this corkscrew move, getting around the defense of Posey, right into Allen. And West has come in at the point guard position and energized the Sonics. Power of thoughtful engineering at thinkaboutit.com. And by Sprite with Lyman. Thank you and obey. Back in Seattle in a tie game at 37. Sonics have never led. Celtics have been up by as many as nine. The bench of Seattle, and you mentioned this early in the game, had to come and play tonight for them to be in this contest. And sure enough, there they are, and there's your score. Well, 23 to 7, thanks to Delonte West and uh, Wally Zerbiak. Those two guys have combined for 16. And Kevin, really, what's happened is in this quarter, Seattle's been able to run with their bench players. It's now 11 to 2 on fast break points. So Doc Rivers cannot be happy with a transition defense. Three on the shot clock. That's why Garnett hoists it such, in such a hurry. Here comes West the other way. So the starters on the floor for the Boston Celtics. Green and West, Serbiak, and a traveling violation on Green. And here comes Boston the other way. Doug with 29 of their 37 points from the Celtics coming from front court players. Well, seven turnovers now, which is uh, really continuing to haunt Seattle. And that's an unforced error. And see, really, Jeff Green does not trust his jump shot right now. He's trying to get in the paint. And Kevin Garnett is giving him such a cushion. Boston does not have a turnover. Now they've got Green on Garnett. Jellabar is watching Ray Allen go inside. There's more defense by the Sonics, and they'll race the other way with Delonte West out of St. Joe's. Drives inside, rejected by Kevin Garnett. Knocks it off to Rondo. Here's a three on two. Allen licking up a three and puts it right down the middle. That's what defense does, guarding the basket. You have to be able to defend the paint in this league or you're not going to be able to go far in the playoffs and that's what Garnett brings the ability to defend that lane area. Petro inside Jello Ball who got by the defense inside and more defense by the Boston Celtics. Well here's a block that leads to a three pointer by Ray Allen that shot was on the way up and here's the kick out and Ray Allen this is what he does best spots up and knocks down three point shots. How often have we seen that in that Seattle uniform and then on the next possession Kevin Garnett with another block shot that went off the Seattle Supersonics. So two straight possessions that Kevin Garnett prevents easy scores for Seattle. Here's Garnett drawing a quick double. Great answer is Garnett into Perkins with the jam. Counted for two and a foul. Perkins going up high and coming down hard. And the foul goes inside on Green of the Sonics. If you're going to double team, Kevin Garnett is a terrific passer. We've seen him be able to be out on the high post and run your offense through him like he did in Minnesota. He's doing that a little bit here. But if you play in the block area down there with Kevin Garnett and you're going to double team, you saw Perkins diving to the hoop. And then you see Ray Allen and Paul Pierce spotting up for that three-point shot. So that's a very difficult cover 
and Perkins was the beneficiary there of the easy slam dunk. Kurt Thomas just checked in with Durant and Wilcox. Three new players in for the Sonics. West will remain. Rondo is on West. Pierce is on Serbiat. Garnett watching Thomas. Wide open is Serbiak. Allen got caught. That's a two-point shot by Wally Serbiak. And again, Doug coming off the bench, four of seven. Now, Ray Allen knew the minute he took the step in that he was in trouble because you cannot leave Wally Serbiak. There was no need for him to go in and try to help on defense. Celtics had nine assists and no turnovers. I think he used the word efficient earlier in the game describing this offense. Allen for two. Rebounded by Thomas. That's what they are. They're in the top ten and the top three, uh, three shooting categories in the league. And Rondo is there defending. Guy at one time led the Southeastern Conference in steals and finished second in assists. Played there a couple of years. Well, when the trade was made, Seattle and Boston originally, uh, originally Sam Presti, the GM in, in uh, Seattle, wanted Rondo in that deal. And Danny Ainge says, no, you're not going to get Rondo. So Vince. <laughs> They went to uh, Delonte West, and he was in the deal because uh, Danny Ainge knew that if he was going to make that deal, that Rondo was going to have to be his starting point guard. And they really like this young guy's defense. His, his offense is continuing to grow a little bit, Kevin. He's going to make the mid-range jump shot. Uh, but Delonte West, more of a slasher cutter, really not the true point guard. He's a guy really looking to score more than he is to set other people up. But tonight he's done a nice job, and especially uh, getting to the free throw line. They had not attempted a free throw and over a quarter and about a half until he came in the game and they started getting to the foul line. Rondo had picked up his second personal foul. There's only one player in the game in double figures. That's Kevin Garnett with 11. Boston is shooting 33% in this second quarter. And a timeout taken by the Boston Celtics. Celtics have led by as many as nine. We've had a couple of ties on a rainy night here in the Pacific Northwest. It's 42-41 Boston on TNT. It's the second sellout of this young season for the Seattle Supersonics. They may not be here much longer, though. And for more on that, let's go over to uh, David Alder. Dave, what do you know? What's an update on this story? Yeah, Kevin, this season is being played amidst the backdrop of majority owner Clay Bennett's decision to move this team to Oklahoma City. He wants to do it after this season. After he couldn't reach an agreement with the team and the city and the state on building a, a building to replace Key Arena, the city has sued Bennett and the team saying that it has to live up to the honor of the terms of its agreement, which will keep it here through 2010. Bennett just wants to pay rent until then and relocate next season. But as one of the city's lawyers who I spoke with today said, the impact of the economic and non-economic uh, impact of the Sonics leaving is much more than any rent check would cover. The case is going to federal court. It's going to be in court next month, discovering all those things. but. It would be a shame if this team left this town. It would be a shame if this city that supported this team for four decades didn't have a team here, Kevin. Well, you know what? This is Seattle's first professional major league team. Before anything else came here, it was NBA basketball. But they, while they still draw, there is still a great deal of apathy in Seattle toward the Sonics, which is a shame because they are a young team on the rise with a, a very well-known player now, in Kevin Durant. Tonight, they have filled every seat to watch the best team in the NBA, the Boston Celtics. And here is the aforementioned Durant missing over Allen, and the rebound picked up by Perkins. Well, we always talk about the importance of ending quarters, and right now the Celtics are poised to make a little push. Let's see if Seattle can dig in here defensively and get some stops and hang around here at halftime. Been pretty good on defense so far. The bench has been terrific for Seattle. 40% shooting for Boston. Rebound by Perkins, who comes around Wilcox and can't get it from point blank range. That's a 24 second shot clock violation. It did not hit the rim. And that is the first turnover for Doc Rivers Celtics tonight. How about it? 41% uh, the uh, Boston Celtics are shooting. So, Kevin, you. You said it. I mean, Seattle's done a nice job defensively. They're shooting 47%, and the bench has been the difference. 27 to 7 points off the bench. So the energy, the fast break game totally changed. West just got picked up. Garnett the other way. Delonte, oh, that's a hard foul, and Garnett goes down, tumbling into photographer's row. And Garnett, who's got some pretty good self control with the expression afterwards. Good steal by Rondo. Well, that's what they do, turn you over. And here is Delonte West. It looked like he got a little piece of the ball, but then he crashed heavily 
into Garnett. Watch here on the way up. It looks like he hits the ball right there, but then goes through and hits him on the arm and the shoulder. So Garnett will go to the line to shoot two free throws. Doug, as you have looked and canvassed Boston's season so far, have they? It's, it's easy for a good team sometimes to play down to the level of competition. Does this team do that, this no, Boston team? No, they have not. When you look at their record against teams under 500, they're 11-0. So they've beaten everybody they're supposed to beat. And more importantly, Kevin, they talk about good teams learn how to win close games. Good teams aren't in a lot of close games. And I mean, <laughs> well, this yeah. team is, has won 20 of their games by 10 or more points. And their point differential is plus 14, which is first in the league. So you know, last year, you see what their record was. Tonight, if they win, they will match their wins. It took them 81 games last year to win 24 games. If they win tonight, they'll get their 24th win. Isn't that something? What a turnaround. Under two to play here on the second quarter from Key Arena in downtown Seattle. Here is Durant, three of nine, now three of ten. Those are all good shots, though. You know, Kevin Garnett has given him a cushion. He's got to knock those shots down. It's Thomas watching KG. Wow. That might have woke Kevin Garnett up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he had a nice little start, but uh, that foul on the head by Delonte West might to get Kevin excited here to finish this half. Garnett's got 14. Pierce has got 11. Across the lane is Wilcox into Kevin Garnett. And there's Perkins again coming up with a nice play. He's got seven rebounds and eight points. Good night for Perkins of the Boston Celtics. That set the screen. Now the switch on defense. Serbiak is on Ronda. So he's giving him that jump shot. Just didn't want him to get to the rim. It's Pierce over Durant for the three. And the rebound by Kevin Garnett as well. Serbiak and Thomas collided. And Pierce rolling up a three. The rebound by Wilcox. Wilcox has been very mercurial this season. Great shot outside by Wally Serbiak. They took that quickly looking for a two-for-one possession. Boston's going to come down here now, use the clock. So worked perfectly there by Wally Serbiak and the Sonics. 12 points all in this second quarter for Wally Serbiak. It's Pearson to Durant. And Garnett works into Thomas. Rebounded by Delonte West. Ahead to Durant. Here he comes! How good has Delonte West been in this first half? I mean, he's been involved in every big play they've made. You think he wants to play against his old team? Absolutely. He's turned the game around. He sure has. He's he and Wally Zerbiak off the bench have been terrific. And a standing ovation for the Sonics on this great play and a terrific sledgehammer thrown down by Kevin Durant. At 19 years of age, the top rookie scorer in the NBA and probably the odds-on favorite to win the Rookie of the Year award. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And you can see getting easy baskets, what it does to this Seattle team when they get out and run. They're not a good half-court team. And when you see his rookie ranks, uh, Kevin, if he stays healthy, you he can probably put his name on the trophy. But he's first in all the big percentage. You see the minutes played, the points, the steals, the assists. He's seventh in rebounding, having a terrific year. And he's just learning how to play this game. The minutes at 33, which I think are pretty good when you look at his body. They don't want to wear him down. He's, he's thin. And as he gets stronger, he's going to become more versatile, Kevin, because he'll be able to play more positions. Right now, they're playing him as a big guard. I think eventually he'll be able to swing between two or three different positions. Eddie House has just come in for the Boston Celtics in the final 15 seconds. There are no fouls to give either way. Rondo with it, 0 of 2. He has not scored in 10 minutes. Works on West with the drive. Snaps it outside. Dumped by Garnett. Trying to along the way in a very entertaining first half. 
Delonte West, the ex Celtic, going against his former team tonight for the first time with a good looking second quarter with eight points and six assists. Garnett's got 14. Paul Pierce has 11. He's standing by with our David Aldridge. Paul, every night you're getting every team's best effort. <laughs> How do you get used to that? Well, we got to get used to it, man. It's a target on our back. Uh, you know, back to back nights, so we got to find some energy, dig deep, find a way to get a win. You guys defensively have been so good all year, but their bench has really gotten going in the second quarter. Yeah, we got to get back in transition. That's the key thing. We talked about it before the game, so halftime, we got to make the adjustment, get back, hopefully make them play a half court. We can get our defense set, and we'll give ourselves a better chance. Paul, well, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. We are at the half here in Seattle. With the Celtics in a tight one over the host Sonics, 47 to 46. Send it now to Ernie Johnson in Atlanta after the break for our halftime show.